Ladies and gentlemen, how many of us have a device in our pocket or our bag that can calculate the 10,000th prime number? Or pi to the 100 millionth digit? That tiny device, less than three centimeters thick, can achieve what was unthinkable 60 years ago. In fact, a mere 40 years ago, this is what we were using to calculate trigonometric values. Isn't it great that today, all we need to do is press one button or type one line, and we immediately find ourselves with the answer as precise as it can be? 40 years ago, we shifted from mostly analog to almost absolutely digital upon the introduction of the scientific calculator. In 30 years, the price per gigabyte of digital storage decreased from $200,000 to mere cents. The point is that technology has been improving at an exponential rate. Developed society has managed to adapt and implement these new technologies in their everyday and educational environments. However, globally developed nations have failed to provide their underdeveloped counterparts with the means to achieve their own sustainable technological programs. The World Bank recently found that in Niger and Liberia, the amount of schools with internet connectivity was as low as 5%. They also found that in Madagascar, the ratio between students to computers was as high as 500 students for every one computer. It's frankly surprising that little has been done to remedy this issue, and it's astonishing that it has not been deemed worthy enough of an issue to solve, which we would be able to do with relative ease. After all, it is our duty as globally developed nations to ensure that our underdeveloped counterparts have the same access to technology that we seem to be so accustomed to. Otherwise, instead of moving forward, these schools and societies that lack computers and lack technology, they stagnate in their innovation and sociocultural development. This occurs for various reasons that have to do with the three aspects of technology that make it hugely beneficial in the educational environment. These are its potential for innovation, its promotion of sociocultural development, and its maintainability. Now, I'd like to begin discussing its potential for innovation by relating it to perhaps a more known example. Presently, 30,000 children die every day from preventable diseases. It's safe to say that we have lost many children that could have potentially made a huge impact on this world. That being said, I'd like to compare this to the fields of computer science and computer engineering. Much like how great potential and great lives are being lost due to the lack of preventative medicine, technological jobs, technological careers, and technological advancements are also being lost. I remind you of the African schools that lack technology. The schools in Madagascar, the schools in Niger, the schools in Liberia. Those are the students that have very little, if any, chance to enter the IT fields. How many thousands of potentially groundbreaking computer scientists have we lost? Only due to the fact that they don't have access to computers. They don't have access to the motivation, the opportunity that technology in the educational environment brings. The next Bill Gates could have been born in Africa, and we'd have no idea. This actually extends past the fields of computer science and computer engineering into general sociocultural development. Presently, the internet gives children, actually anyone, a platform through which he or she can publish their work. Whether it be a Thai student study on market behavior or a Jamaican girl's artwork, the internet allows for limitless possibilities to spread and share and publish one's work. That hypothetical Thai student can now be a world-famous economist. 
that hypothetical Jamaican girl could now be a world-famous artist all through the power of the internet. In addition, the internet allows children to pursue their true passions. It creates a better society, a society that can tap into the potential that lies dormant within students who simply don't have the means to utilize their talents and abilities to the fullest. The internet creates a society in which everyone in every corner of this world can share their knowledge and share their abilities and share their ideas, thereby launching us into a virtuous cycle of social development. Furthermore, the internet gives us access to what would be previously inaccessible information. Wikipedia, with its 40.8 million pages, becomes accessible. Khan Academy becomes accessible. Google, the all-powerful search engine, becomes accessible. A child in the most rural part of Africa can experience a virtual tour through France. Children and adults alike can educate themselves in literally any field they desire. This brings with it many great benefits. It could lead to an increasingly globalized society. It could lead to a decrease in xenophobia. It could lead to a global increase in intelligence. And these benefits, they're only accentuated by the provision of technology in the educational environment, as these are the key developmental years of a child's life, the years that can determine a child's character and a child's aspirations. Now, these are only the greatest general benefits. In Kenya, for example, mobile phones are being used to bring education directly into the household. In Chile, specialized programs are being used to establish and promote teacher-to-teacher -teacher collaboration, which leads me into my next point of maintainability. See, I know we can help this. I know we can help this issue. I know we can solve this issue. I know this from first-hand experience. I manage a year-round project in which myself and a group collect, repair, and then donate technological equipment to schools and organizations in need. My experience in this project has taught me that computers are surprisingly sustainable. They're surprisingly easy to maintain. This is due to their low power cost and their efficient, uh, efficient construction. To explain, computers, desktops in particular, are built in such a way that they are modular. This means that essentially, if one part breaks, only that part needs to be fixed or repaired or replaced. And then the whole system is back up running again. Furthermore, to run an iMac for two and a half hours every day for an entire year, it would only cost 10 to $15. And this is according to Apple's own statistics on power consumption. This just demonstrates how for so little effort, we can achieve so much. And this is why, through this talk, I hope to inspire you. I hope to inspire you to acknowledge and aid the persistent issue that is the unavailability of technology. After all, this is among the easier issues to help. All you need to do is donate your unused, old, or even broken technological equipment to organizations such as Computer Aid International, based off of Britain, or ISB's own HS Tech. By doing this, we set the first stepping stone to a society with internet and its benefits. We create societies that are perhaps more globalized, more innovative, perhaps more culturally developed. However, with that being said, we must also acknowledge that as our world progressively moves forward technologically, the separation between the haves and the have-nots also magnifies. Therefore, it's important, it's absolutely crucial that we give the chance to these underdeveloped nations to achieve their own sustainable technological programs independent from the developed nations before they are too far behind to help. One computer, 
One computer could change a child's life. So let's start changing lives. Thank you.